as you can see, I am centered and uh, I'm actually compassed about by some very marvelous people uh, to right here to my right, to my direct right, I have with me the prophet Poshan Java. And to my direct left, I have the prophet Lovi Elias. And of course, with us today, we have a young person who I thought would be very significant in helping us to understand, helping me actually to understand what's going on with the assemblers and the connectors. And I thank God for my dear friend, Sister Jessica Beatty. So today we want to talk about what's going to happen May 12th through the 14th. And we're going to look at it in uh, many different ways. And uh, we're going to have many uh, discussions about what's going on. I I'm going to open by saying, that things have changed. Things have changed radically since the pandemic. And anyone who observes what goes on in a contemporary environment definitely knows that things are not the same today as pre-pandemic. And so I think I'll begin by uh, just simply uh, asking Jessica to uh, why is it, what is it that attracts young people to ministries such as Passion Java and Low Vialize? What, what, what's happening now for young people to take a different look from where I was and am to where they are? Um, I would say that um we can connect to their business mind, business sense, and implementing that into faith and belief. Not that you aren't doing that, but a lot of the modern preachers are talking about it more, even on Sunday morning, how I can implement my faith and my walk into my business practices, into my daily life, so that I can use the gifts and the talents to profit with all. And that's something that attracts me as a millennial because I don't just want to make it to heaven. I don't just want to live abundant life after I pass away. I want to live abundantly down here as well. So I think that's a um, that's something that our generation is reaching for because we can read our Bible. We know the things that it takes to be saved. And we're interested in reading our Bibles. We're interested in faith. We're interested in salvation. But I also want to live my faith in my business, live my faith in my relationships, live my faith as I'm transitioning out of my 20s into my 30s. I want to live my faith as a mother. I want to live my faith as a potential spouse. I want to live my faith as a, as a business mogul. I should be... Um, I should be expanding my... You talk about the parents, parable of the talents a lot. I should be doubling my talents continuously as I get older, decade by decade, every five years, every two years. And I think that's very appealing to my to my generation and seeing that faith and business aren't two separate entities. Faith and relationships aren't two separate entities. They should all work together and I should be a light in every single environment that I go to. Uh, how about the demonstration of the of the anointing and the power of God that is seen in ministries such as the prophet uh, Lofi and uh, the prophet uh, Java. What, 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 what do you see there? Because in many instances we talk about uh, the entrepreneurship aspect, but what attracts the young person to the assembly? What makes them go to the building as opposed to just simply staying online? Because that's what you all do. That's how we reach you. For me, I'm a church baby. So there's a feeling that I get in the house that I don't get at home. There's a, there's a move that I feel in my spirit that I can't touch my screen to feel. Now, for some of my friends, they're okay with being online just to say that they went to, went to church. I can't speak for everybody, but for me, I'm attracted to the move of God, the power of God in person. But I do know that a lot of millennials, they like the LED screens now. They like to incorporate that in their worship experience. They like to see when other churches are bringing in amazing worship artists and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff is great. 
and I'm not knocking that. For me, I need to feel something different that I can't feel at home. I need to connect with people when I'm not connecting at home. But I will say overall, a lot of us located worshiping for home because church has become routine for some of us. And as long as I fulfilled my need to tap into the routine, I kind of did what I was supposed to do, if that makes sense. What does laying on of hands mean to you? Is it necessary? It is necessary. Um, touching and agreeing, praying with somebody, that's important to me. But then again, I, like I said, I was raised in church. I was raised believing that stuff is important. I was raised feeling the impact of that on my life. I can connect with you when two or three are gathered in my name than his in the midst. So that's important to me. I see. Now, dear, uh, I, I'm going to begin with my, uh, good, with my son before I go to grandson. And uh, how is it that you connect? How is it that you connect in an assembly that you don't do online? What, what's the difference? Well, I want to start by thanking you for being with us oh, today. Thank you. God bless. Uh, most of pastors and bishop talking about you they are not Bishop Jones in the way that they only raised themselves from the youth, the congregations. When someone is gifted to be a prophet among their church, they kick them out. Okay. When someone is raised to be an apostle, they don't understand them. They only understand their own culture, I their see. own nature. But from you, Bishop, I have seen apostles, I've seen prophets, I've seen evangelists, pastors, and teachers all coming out from you which puts you in a difficult position with other pastors and bishop because every pastor and bishop is logged in a certain couch. Okay. Now, you having Prophet Lovi and myself with you in this program, many people may question, Bishop, why would you have this hairstyle in church? <laughs> <laughs> why would you have this prophetic move in a church, this laying on of hands in the church? And... I'll respond to the people and say, the God of 2023 is not the same with the God of 1902, though he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when God moves, sometimes he changes seasons. Yes. Definitely. There have been seasons of Aura Roberts planting one dollar knot into the ground. <laughs> physically and years later god says do you remember the place you planted the seed he says yes and that's where he has the biggest university for church uh, crazy things happening kenneth huggins making people laugh in the church and other preachers didn't understand it uh, william branham coming to call people's names and some people didn't understand it uh, John Austin believing in just uh, what other preachers would call, uh, I don't know how to call it. But in, in short, uh, God is a God of all packages and he reviews his packages to different people in different ways. And the old generation is failing to understand the today's package because it has come with what they never expected simply because times have changed. In 1994, people needed magazines and videotapes to watch pornography. But today, they just jump on their phones. That means the church also have to jump into the phone and be available for the now generation. That's when Lovey comes in every day and teach the word of God in a way that people have never seen. But after exaggerating the word, when they come to church, they are now seeing the gifts of the Holy Spirit that they don't see in their church. They are used of the word. But the power, the deliverance, the prophecies, the healing that they are seeing is out of this world. That's why many bishops, many pastors are losing church members. Because when God moves into the new season, they are not moving into the new season. They are still stuck in 1920. While well, it's here in 1923. So then we're dealing now with identity and relevance. Yes. Because, because, believe it or not, after a certain time, when you get to a certain age, 
you're going to identify with what it is that you have been doing. Mm -hmm. And you, that's going to be your identity. When I, for instance, we've got uh, uh, Lovi, we've got uh, Java, and, uh, well, Passion, and you've got me. Mm -hmm. And even though we are different, we all have our own identity. The problem is going to arise, and I, I want Lovi to, to talk about this, because uh, just today, a, a member of mine is saying that she is now going to your assembly. How, how many years has she been here? Mm -hmm. How many oh, years? she's been here for 23 years. And, and she's suddenly a, she she's a great in the member. morning, and she's at Lovi's. Yes, but now she, she wants to go to Lovi's. I don't have a problem with it because whatever it is that she has gained from me in 23 years, she's looking for something that I don't do. You follow? And I don't have a problem with that because I don't believe that any one ministry can perfect an individual. I don't believe that because uh, uh, after, of course, he led captivity captive, he gave some apostles, and then he gave some prophets, he evangelists, and then pastors and teachers. Everybody calls it the fivefold ministry, but it's actually fourfold, because pastors and teachers are under the Granville Sharp Law in the Greek, which makes them one. So it's really fourfold, but then that's technical, that's biblicist kind of thing. But the thing that I noted with uh, the prophet when I went to Houston, was, and I went on a fact-finding, I went to be informed. I went, I was studying it. And what I've discovered, because, is that what he is doing in his presentation and in his ministry is he does what I do, mm -hmm. and then he does the prophetic aspect of it, yeah. which gives a sort of double portion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked Jessica earlier, did she know Shambach? And she had no clue who Shambach was. And it's the same way that uh, I asked some young people, do you know Grace Jones? They said, I have no clue who Grace Jones is. Mm. But now that Grace does a song with Beyonce, now they know who Grace Jones is. Yeah. Now my wife calls it cross-pollinating. Yeah. Now that I relate to, to, to Lovi and I relate to you, uh, passion, now all of a sudden I am known in circles where I wouldn't have been known and exposed again, so my shelf life is great. Now, what I want to ask Lovi is, because what I have here is I'm biblicist completely. You're prophetic for the most part. Lovi is biblicist and prophetic. So I want to ask Lovi, how do you balance the two and which is more significant to you? Well, first I want to say thank you to uh, my dad being here and thank you for, um, th I thank the Lord for you, Grandpa, too, because without the two of you, I wouldn't be here. And I want to thank Jessica for being here. What you spoke in the beginning really touched me. It was really powerful. Well, I look at it this way. The first thing is that you have, you see, when people are trying to be relevant, I think they have already lost the point. Mm -hmm. okay. Because uh, when God called Jesus, Jesus wasn't trying to be relevant. Our Lord was simply expressing what his father gave him to express. In your generation, Bishop, you are not trying to be anybody. You are perfecting what God gave you. Of course, we get inspired. Yes. But initially, our identity is an expression of God. Because we are all unique. We are all different. So, I find that many don't understand that the expression of God in you is also the same way that your vision of God also comes. We all perceive God differently. That's right. There's no one way people perceive God. I teach the way I teach because of how I have seen God. Mm. I didn't come from a religious people. I came from a musician background. Right. But my calling you know, to God in 1992 when I was still like six 
is what permits me to see God the way I see God. Right. Now, when we are trying to be relevant, we are already missing the point. That means that we are trying to go into sheep that we were not sent to. Mm. But at the same time, uh, you're talking about relevance and there's a time that it will shift. The point is that many shepherds don't understand that there is a time they have to pass the staff or the baton to the next generation. That's right. And their problem begins that they are trying to fight to remain in what they should have left and mentored from a distance or up close. So there are things that the new, like an example, I spend a lot of time with you, Bishop. I spend time with my father. And what my father has done and what you have done is you have made me avoid the pitfalls that are common to all men. I believe when the Bible says that um, there is nothing new, it is not talking about, like we didn't have cars 50 years ago. Right, right, right. Or maybe 50 years we did, but we didn't have jets and or a uh, 100 years ago. There's a lot of technology we have that is not, that was not there. Mm. But the expression of life is still the same. That's right. The expression of life hasn't changed. We still eat, we still sleep, we want to dress, we That's still right. have the same worries. But my point being is that the relevance part is what is destroying the church because once a person loses the vision of God, which is, it is about salvation of souls. It's always about people coming to Christ. That's really it. And if I understand that that is what it's about, then I take myself out of the picture. Then I become more concerned about what God is concerned about. You don't mind a 20-something year member going to your grandson because your great desire is the perfection of a man's soul. Now, right. out of all creatures that God ever created, mm. the human being is the least prepared for life. That's right. That's least. Right. Because the soul of a man has to develop. Most animals are born with instincts. Human beings are not born with instincts. That's a baby right. has no instincts. They have to develop. Mm. So if you understand that it's about the development of the soul, and for a man to grow in wisdom in order to attain salvation, then you'll be more interested about people seeing Christ than people filling your chairs. Yes, right. I always say this in my church. The church should be a place that we have a high turnover rate because we are sending people out, making disciples of others. It shouldn't be a place where we just have people sitting. Then it becomes a, a, a cemetery or a, or a museum. Yeah. It should never be like that. So in, in, in making it short and, and you know, being, trying to summarize this, my, my point is this, is that as time goes, our roles change in the kingdom of God because that's what an elder or a mature person becomes is that right. you realize that God will do something new. These are patterns that have never changed. John the Baptist was, was in maybe a year or two older than Christ, or maybe a few months older than Christ. A few months. A few months older than Christ, but after he knew where his assignment ended, he was okay with telling his disciples, follow Jesus. Don't follow me. My assignment is pretty much done. What I needed to do, I have done. Follow him. There goes the Lamb of God. But it is the desire to hold on to a position that becomes a problem and then a generation ends up missing God because miracles are not new, but ministrations are new. That's why the Bible says that same spirit, different ministrations. That's right. So the way Bishop, you people have been healed in your service, maybe not because you, you, you see, even when people talk about deliverance, and I believe that casting out of demons and deliverance is two different things. Because casting out of demons is just the beginning of deliverance. True, true deliverance is in the scriptures. If the word of God is not in you, you're not delivered. That's true. You know, that's so true. you cast out demons for people to be perfected in the word, and that's what deliverance is. When you no longer fear death, you're delivered. When you know that your life is in God, your present circumstances don't determine where you're going, you're delivered. delivered. You know, that's the true deliverance. Casting out of dem demons is just the beginning of it. And not all demons come out shouting and screaming. Sometimes a truth that makes you repent, a truth that makes you forgive, that, that stronghold left you, you are free. So God will approach generations according to their understanding, according to their season, and according to their times. 
So I feel that um, what is hindering a lot of men is that the men of God especially, whether they are apostles, bishops, I get attacked all the time. They call me all manner of things. But I am not offended with that because even the Lord, they thought the same. When it was um, Samson, when he came from Timna, his mother and father, he told his mother and father, wife, this young girl for me because she pleases me well and they said how dare you not pick somebody from your own people and you go and find an uncircumcised philistine right. then everybody in the church still labels samson as as a man with lust but if you read the next verse it yeah. says it was his father and mother knew not that it was of the lord it was of the lord's doing that he sought an occasion against, against the philistines right. so the whole church has always demonized him but what he was doing was the leading of god it was god looking an occasion looking for an occasion to destroy them so the issue becomes people don't understand the move of god even though his father and mother met the angel of the lord that's right they did not know the workings of the Spirit of God for his generation. That's right. Um, that's and for much the purpose precious. that God had for him. Yes. I want to make one correction, though, I think I must make. Yes. And that is that Jesus was in the womb the same time that Mary, yes. uh, Mary and, and, uh, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth and John. So they were in the womb the same time. Yes. The question now uh, that's perked by that statement is which one of them was born first. Uh, uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, so there's no six months different. But anyway, I think that uh, you make the point very clear. So now uh, with that discourse, I, I think I have to ask this question. And, and that is that in seeking to be relevant from one perspective, in seeking to be relevant than the the presenter, the preacher, whether prophetic or whether uh, biblicist or oriented, is relevance then seeking to be what the people would want at this time? Is that how you define relevance? Is it being what the people want? Because the Bible said they would heap to themselves mm -hmm. teachers because their ears were itching. Okay. Is it for the preacher to do the will of God in spite of whether he's received or not? Or should he seek to be received? This, this is my, I'll use myself as an example, Bishop. Yeah. When the Lord called me to do the work of God, there's only one man that knew what God put in me. And that's my father sitting there. Lots of men of God said his accent will make people not understand him. I came from a musical background, so having long hair is not a new thing to me. Okay. In fact, at some point, I cut my hair because I wanted to fit in. Then I realized that's not even me. I'm acting. You know, what makes us connect to, in my perspective, Go ahead. is the message that God has put for you for that generation. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. If you don't have a message for the generation, it doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter what you do. You will never connect. Yeah. Because it's initially God drawing his own unto himself. That's right. So the point is, what has God... I believe an example is this, Bishop. Moses had a message. Joshua had a message. Everyone that was sent by God had a message. You know, just because you preach from the scriptures doesn't mean you have a message. That's true. If you look at uh, in the book of Samuel, it says in those days, the word of the Lord was very rare. Very there were rare. no open visions. How can the word of God be rare? Yet we have a priest called Eli right. who has the scriptures in the temple. Right. Yet God is not speaking. So just because I can correct people in scripture, just because I can preach from the scripture what is accurate, doesn't mean that's what God is saying right now. It doesn't mean that. The Lord Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, you seek the scriptures thinking in them you will find life, but it only points to me. So whoever is relevant is whoever is able to point people to Christ. There's a lot of things I have done that is completely unorthodox. It's not new, but it may be new to my generation. But it's completely unorthodox in the sense that 
I gather a lot of people and, and God can deliver all of them at the same time. It is not something people are used to, especially on this side of the world or in that magnitude. I believe the last person that was able to do it to that level was uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua. That's the only person we ever saw that with. When it comes to the prophetic, I can prophesy, but my father is in a completely different world and planet mm. than I have ever seen. But all these things... All these things are a means for God to touch people. I have young people that come to me. I'm young too, but I have younger people that come to me that think that if they can prophesy, they will have a big church. No, I have never sought, the Lord is my witness as the Lord lives. I have never sought to have a big church. Right, right. I've never even thought of it. I am just me, but God has caused it to be so in my time because I have a message for a certain group of people. Right. And there's a time they will receive that message and God will raise another person. And my duty is to support whoever God raises. Right. It's not to oppose them. Right. It's to empower them. So our relevance is in what the Holy Spirit is saying. It is not about location. Because now there are men of God that think that if I go to L.A., then I'll have a big church. Or if I go to this place, John the Baptist was in the wilderness. People followed him to the wilderness to be baptized. So if Jesus would run to the mountains and people would go to the mountains because there is something that he had to deliver. So it is not the relevance because we are spiritual people. Yes, we use YouTube. Yes, we use... Because nowadays, you know, when Jesus said, go to the highways and the byways, right. if he was today, he would say, go on YouTube, go on TikTok, go on this. Right. You know, he would change this because there are more people online. People spend hours and hours. Business is conducted online more than the highways and the byways like back in the day. So it has completely changed. So in, 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 in summarizing, maybe I'm being long-winded, but... I believe the reality is, as spiritual people, First uh, Corinthians chapter 2 says, somebody who is not spiritual cannot receive the things of the Spirit. The natural man. The natural man can't receive things of the Spirit. So we are trying to be carnal to express what is spiritual, yet we are supposed to be spiritual, and God find a way to reach men that are carnal. You know, so... Indeed. Well, I understand that clearly. Uh, I was going to have a question for the bishop himself. Well, I, I was going to say two things, and I'll answer all the questions okay, in the world. Okay, that's cool. Uh, in, in understanding that and, and to, to, you know, sort of what they call simmer it down, or I call it pray see, uh, it's essential then to understand that the focus is on God who selects and chooses for such a time as this. And the such a time as this in my time is not a such a time as this in your time. And go so, ahead. Sorry, Bishop, and just adding that, God does not elect us based on people's opinion. That's a fact. He doesn't That's need a, a counsel to choose anyone. That's a fact. When he chose you, he didn't gather people to decide you're going to serve him. This is That's something that was before time. The same thing with my father, the same thing with me, and the same thing with her and anyone that is watching. Before time. Before time. I, I just wanted to throw that in there because there is this thing whereby if he's not like me, if she's not like me, if he doesn't talk like me, God doesn't need anyone to be perfect to use them. In fact, if anything, it reveals God's sovereign grace and his ability. And it also indicates that he is the one that each one of us has to look to for yes, the salvation that he yes. has provided. Because yes. there's only one mediator between man and God, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also important, and I think it's, it's, it's very relevant, and this question is to you. Don't forget your question. Mm -hmm. uh, you're younger than I am, so I have to get my question out first because yes. I forget mine. But how does money play into this? Because there's so much conversation about money. And the question that I would ask is, how does money play into it? And how does showing oneself to be prosperous, how does that help to promote the ministry in a contemporary environment? Or does it's, it? Uh, it's more of a connection when you come about presenting yourself with the hairstyle like that these days. I believe also your days it was when you go on TV, the makeup. 
uh, the dressing, everything. And what happens now is people connect themselves to themselves. They don't connect, connect themselves to others. Meaning to say, if they see themselves in me, they'll follow me. Is that how it happens? Yeah. See, I, mean, I always said I am too flawed to, to be, be flashy. Yeah. So <laughs> the flesh is not me. So flashy people are not going to relate with you because they don't see themselves in you. Okay. They see themselves in me because I'm wearing green and red. Gucci. So they are going to connect with me that way. Uh, Bishop raises a powerful change, but Bishop is 72 now. Yeah. Somebody who is 35, 40 years, they are going to connect with me because they see themselves in me, in edge. Okay. So they are going to derive from seat of refugee to RCJC because they are connecting themselves to themselves. Edge, edge, okay. dressing, dressing. The language is the same. Bishop is not going to talk about drip. <laughs> and so sometimes it is the presentation we have to have is we are looking for a connection. When I put this hairstyle, I never thought in my entire life I'll have this hairstyle. Okay. And my story happened like this. This man sitting here uh, said, <laughs> Papa, is it bad to put tattoos? I show him some scripture. I say, it's not bad to make tattoos. But he's struggling to put them. So what I did is I put my wife's name, my kids' name, <laughs> my names. I sent him a picture. Ah, next thing he went, he put his tattoos. He asked me, is it bad to look like what I used to look because I feel like this is not me? And I sent him a picture after two months, <laughs> some lines. And uh, I thought people run away from us, but instead of running away, we have more people coming to us. But in more people coming to us, which is the youth, we lost some connections with old connections because some people never thought they can relate with us this way. So sometimes it's not like we want to be flashy. Sometimes we just want to connect with people that feel like I'm, too, I'm looking too good to go to church. I see. There are people that feel like I have to go home first, remove the Chanel's, to remove the Gucci's, the Versace, to wear a dress that reaches the ankle to go worship God. But in our generation, we are trying to make everybody come in their comfortability. So today is wearing like Jesus. Tomorrow he is wearing like Moses. Uh, tomorrow he's wearing like me because we are seeking a connection with the people. So are you saying essentially then that you're operating in, I've become all things to all men that I might win some to Christ? True. Uh, is, yes. is, is that what you're saying? 100%. And two weeks ago, I removed this because there's a church I was going to preach for. I didn't want some people to struggle to receive me uh, because in their connection, they don't connect with this. I struggled in Jamaica 2014. I, I go preach. I'm looking well, smart, and sharp, but I don't have a jacket, a, a suit jacket. So the bishop says, you cannot preach in my church without a jacket. So I had to wear an oversized jacket <laughs> to preach in his church because all I needed was to connect with the people before I give them the word of the Lord. So uh, speak to that. Yeah, yeah. To me, also, I believe this, as, as uh, Papa said. My perspective is slightly different, even yeah. though I agree 100% with what he's saying. My perspective is this. I feel like um, this generation is the generation of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. People are way more exposed to things than the previous generation. To things uh, in terms of material, material, material in, things, information, good things, or no, information, things. clothes, and all this lifestyle. They say, they but say, what about the individual who can achieve that? No, I'm coming to that. Okay. Bishop. So, so your looks are your hooks in this generation. <laughs> <laughs> to me, yes. To me, this is what I believe. And some people from your generation made a mistake, Bishop. Okay, go ahead. In my opinion, and I may be completely wrong. But go ahead. My picture is this, is that I don't believe 
everybody will be a multimillionaire. It's true. That's I true. don't believe it. I believe that the blessing of God is always according to our capacity and our calling. 100%. But in whatever God has called us to do on earth, whatever he will give us, if we are truly in him, there will be a sense of satisfaction and we will maximize ourselves in everything that God has given us. Now, I feel it is a big mistake. I, don't, I am not, even though I dress nice, to be honest with you, it's just my culture where I come from. My mother is Iranian. She's a Middle Eastern woman. But my father is from the Congo. Congolese people dress nice. I grew up, we just, we just dress the way we dress. So for me, it is not I am trying to show anybody. It's just the way we dress. Okay. But I feel it is a mistake if God gives me a nice car, even though I don't post cars. But I'm not ashamed of showing what I have. Because I don't want to feel, I don't want it to be, or somebody to look at me and think that God cannot call you to be a man or a woman of God and you have to hide your blessing or be offended. Jesus said, don't be offended of me. So if God has given me the ability to wear a Rolex, I'm not going to wear a Casio. Why? Because that doesn't make me more spiritual or less spiritual. That's my perspective. But you see, there's a certain group of people that believe that a man shouldn't wear like that. You shouldn't look like this. You shouldn't. They think they connect modesty to spirituality, and that's completely wrong. I believe the most spiritual person is one who can benefit men with what God has given them. Can you minister to them in the way God wants them to be ministered to? Because this is a very ambitious generation, Bishop, whereby there are so many ways for people to increase to to multiply what they have and to be they are more multi-millionaires in this generation than any other generation why there are more opportunities because the world is not as industrious as it was it is more how intelligent how you can solve things so there is somebody sitting down at home on a computer that is more effective than somebody who's working five jobs but in reality what i'm trying to say is that our appearance in this generation, people have come to realize that people are less religious. Let me say it in that way. They believe I can have God when I have dreads, when I wear my boots, when I wear my jacket, yes, when I wear... Yes, yes. They, they are no longer caught up with that. I remember I had a conversation with you, uh, Grandpa, and I asked you, I told you, Bishop, is it wrong for me to desire one day to be a bishop? You told me, no, initially, to be honest with you, you are an overseer, so you are technically a bishop. Right. So I was uh, with Bishop uh, uh, Dixon, yeah. and he gave me his bishop chain. Remember? Chain. The, yeah, yeah, he gave me a bishop chain. chain, a big old bishop chain. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I wore it. I wore uh, an African outfit, but I tucked my bishop chain because to me it was so drip. <laughs> drip? Yeah, it was so, it was just, it was wow. so, it was so <laughs> swagalicious. Swagalicious. So, 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 so I went to see Bishop after a service and I went to hang out with Bishop because we were going to go watch a, a jazz band that Bishop invited me to. So I went with the, I went to Bishop and I said, Bishop, look at what I have. He said, man, put that thing away. <laughs> and, the queen of, and the queen of Wakanda was like, I said, Bishop, don't you have one of these Bishop chains? I want one. <laughs> He said, no, I threw those things away, man. They, I don't even wear the bishop outfit. I, those things are just, it's just posing, but the, what they carry within them is not, it's not measured by the outfit or all this. And I laughed, and I laughed because I was like, bishop is definitely a rebel for his generation because some felt more spiritual when they wore those yeah. chains and all those things. So in short, what I'm saying is that to me, I am not trying to connect in my dressing. It's just who I am. There are people who will like it and there are people who not. But at the same time, I have more artists, more people in film that are coming because they don't feel left out. But I also believe my character and my personality with those who know me know that ah, it's not, don't mind how he looks like. When I went to Paris, the Congolese culture, people dress nice, but they don't believe in long hair. I got you. But when I went there and they saw the demonstration of God and they heard what I teach, their whole perspective changed. 
So this generation is not caught up in what you look like. They're more concerned with what has God put inside of you. Yes, that can make me look at you like, huh? Mm -hmm. Then when I hear you, I'm like, oh my God, he really has something from God. Some substance. Some substance. So yeah. in short, that's, I mean, when it comes to bishops, I mean, I, I watch your old videos, then I see the robes. Yeah. I'm still trying to find a robe from you, Bishop. <laughs> well, I gave up the robes a long time ago because many people associated that with Catholicism alone. Uh, and they couldn't open up to the more general. Mm -hmm. So I try to be very, uh, might I say, eclectic in whatever I do because then it approaches and reaches for everyone. But when we deal with the whole issue of, of, of money and the prophetic, money and even what I do, uh, because when I checked the survey on people and their attitude towards church, much of the problem of the people who were visiting and the people who were in church was how we dealt with raising money. That uh, was the problem that was most... Uh, uh, mainly when it comes to money, it's in two ways. Because there is the culture, then there is the language. The difference between uh, uh, Pastor Blah 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 and Bishop Noel Jones is that Bishop Noel Jones have got an established place to worship God. The screens, the mics, the lights, the chairs. But uh, Pastor Blah 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 is starting ministry now, so he is renting a church building, he is renting the chairs, he needs money for instrument, he needs to be established. So he is going to need more money for the church than Bishop will not even need money for the church building. So the struggle that happens with us in our starting and growing is that uh, some pastors and bishops inherited churches that were already established. Yeah, that's a fact. I have been in a place of 2012 driving to church and the instruments are out, the chairs are out, uh, the owner of the building kicked us out because four months we were failing to pay the rents. I see. So when somebody sees us now online saying, we need money for this, we need money for this, we need money for this, they don't see a preacher, they see somebody who's robbing money from people. See. It's, it's the need that a church that is being built is in need of. Then obviously, like he, police have got fake police officers and good ones, the teachers, the pastors, they're fake ones and good ones. And in everything that we do as humans, there is always a weakness. So other pastors or prophets will come in and take advantage of the term of giving so that they can benefit from the people. Some, they are not taking advantage of the people. They are doing good, but they are caught up in what they are doing, and they take advantage of the people. But in what I will stand for to talk to the people is there has been always a culture, like in Genesis chapter number 12, God never told Abraham what to give. Abraham just gave. But in chapter number 15, God is specific to Abraham and is telling him, bring A, B, C, D, because that's what I'm requesting from you. You'd go to the book of Kings and Elijah is telling somebody uh, who has the last piece of cake for her to eat and their son to eat, then they way to die. But he is saying, I'm a prophet, bring it to me, which will never sound well. Yeah, but <laughs> imagine a widow, someone without a husband, they've got last savings, and you say, bring it to me. It will never sound well to anybody hearing what's happening. But then a miracle happened where the flour, the oil, the cake was maintained for a long time because I believe there is nothing God can't do. The problem I have with other pastors is when they say God can't do this. Mm -hmm. There is nothing God cannot do. Now, it, it, it grows to a culture where she is raised in church where the pastor preaches this way and does things this way. So she's used to a certain way. 
I grew up in assemblies of God. Wearing jeans was a sin. Wearing watch was a sin. Yeah. Uh, sitting next to a lady like this was a big, it's still a big sin. If I go back to my church, this is an evil. I'll be under discipline maybe for six months in my church. <laughs> but uh, my main point comes to say, when I come out of the church, for example, I take my saliva and I put it in the food. I say, eat, then you shall be healed. Nobody understands it. Bishop will never understand it. Myself, if somebody tells me that, I'll say it's demonic. But, but Jesus is standing before a blind man. He takes his saliva. He made clay. He anoints the man's eyes. He says, go wash your face, and the man is healed. The Pharisees called for a meeting right away. They are not celebrating the miracle. They are saying, this is a devil. They are mistaking Jesus himself with a devil because what he is doing is not what they are doing it's not what is accepted in the church is it from god it is from god that's why we have many people who don't understand that when they come on his life they will come on my life they are not coming to learn the word no matter how much we can preach bishop right, that's what when i preach i'm bad but most of the preachers, when they come, they are not listening to grow. They are listening to correct. Criticize. Some to criticize, some to correct me, so that after they call, they say, you should say A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. I give them another script, and I'm like, oh, I understand. So the demarcation between uh, many people when it comes to the topic of money I see it as culture and different language. Uh, Bishop Noel Jones will say, I want whoever want to give offering according whatever you believe, come and give. Mm -hmm. When you go to Africa, people bring maize to the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Some will bring groundnuts to the pulpit. So the pastor in Africa have to specify and say, we are building, we need 50,000. It's cheap to build in Africa. 50,000. One people can give us $2,000 each or $5,000 each. And a pastor who's watching online is going to say, why would you tell people to give 5,000? Because he doesn't understand the culture and the place where somebody's preaching from. I see. Can I yes, come? go ahead. No, no, go, go ahead. I, I've known you all my life. You've always, your offering has been, a, it's been from a place of worship. Um, give out of your thanksgiving, give out of your appreciation. It's not an auction, and it's not if you give this $100,000 today, God's going to send you a check in the mail. Yeah. So I've seen you do that all of my life, but I've also seen other preachers. And it becomes the auction. It becomes the bargaining method. When you're sitting in the pew, I don't have. what if I don't have those means? Am I not going to get the deliverance and the breakthrough if I don't have those means? And then it's also disheartening, and maybe because I've took, taken business, the church is a business sometimes, and we forget about that. But when the preachers and the pastors aren't honest, we have a need. That's You can be honest and say that. The church has a need. There are some churches that are more established Whatever you give, it doesn't matter. We're established. But as he was a, a prophet, passion was mentioning, some churches do have a need and are a different place. You can be honest and say, I respect that more if you're honest and say that versus the bargaining and the auction. And God's going to do this if you do that. I believe also that it's offensive in certain past when certain pastors they drive up in the best you know, car, cars and stuff, but the church is struggling. So if I'm an entrepreneur, just from an entrepreneurial standpoint, if I'm an entrepreneur, I have to invest in my business. I have to invest in my ministry. If I want to start a women's ministry and it's just me, I have to put my own money into that. If the church is struggling and I know you're okay at home, you testify about the Lord did this for you and provided this business for you, but the church is struggling and this is supposed to be what he gave you from your gifting. I, I, as a millennial, as a person sitting in the pews, I have an issue with you not investing into what you are supposed to be investing in, which is your ministry, your, your gifting. And that that's disheartening for a, just a blame member sitting gonna, in the seat. I was going to break it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to church, 
we have people that comes to say, who is preaching today? Yeah. And it's because Bishop is here, they are coming to church. That's right. We lie on a flyer that Bishop is preaching. When they get here and they see another preacher or the elders preaching, right. they make a U-turn and they leave. That's right. Because they are here because of who is preaching. We have other people that come because they don't care who is preaching. They just want to hear how is he preaching. That's right. They don't care who are you or how are you dressed or what are you parking outside. They just want... How is he saying? And in the how, that's when many people are tricked because I, 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 I know what to tell you, mm. how to tell you. I, I know if I sing it, you're going to like it. I know if I say it this way, you're going to cry. If I say it this way, you're going to be excited. And in return, whatever I want, I'm going to get because I know how to penetrate into your heart. Then we have people, which is the mature group, which is rare to find. People that say, what is being said? They don't care how you are saying it or who you are. That's right. They, they want to write. Even if it's online, they are writing. And if they listen to you for 20, 30 minutes and they have some, nothing to write, they're not going to follow you again. That's right. Now, the problem comes because the majority of people, they are interested in how is he saying. That's where the crowd is. The how part. They don't care about the who. Most people, especially young guys, they follow someone because of who. But majority of everybody, especially ladies, it's a how is he saying it. Now, in the how is he saying it, I will talk to pastors. I don't do that. But I will talk about other pastors that when they are doing fundraising, as she said, uh, if you say the church needs 50,000, nobody gives. If it is the pastor that says <laughs> the church needs 50,000, because the pastor said it, everybody gives. Some groups now is how. I have one pastor, everybody loved the team, but I defended him though, though he was wrong. In Zimbabwe, he came and he had sticks. <laughs> Three. And he said, I prayed for these sticks the whole night. If you want my anointing, He's in these sticks. And one stick is $100. <laughs> he made thousands of dollars from the sticks. I see. And I believe, I don't know what was his point. He could have been doing it for his own gain. But I believe he was doing his own fundraising. And the only way he would do it was how to say I want money. The people that says what's being said in their maturity looked at the preacher and I believe they just saw that the preacher wants money. There's nothing to do with sticks. There's nothing to do with anointing. And these sticks are not going to do anything to people. But he had a how to say it. He is going to achieve the church building he was looking for. But every preacher that's looking at him is going to say, this guy is crazy. Yeah. People are going to persecute him because they don't know uh, the struggle is going through because he attracted people who are not mature. He attracted people who don't care mm -hmm. what you are saying. They just like the how yeah. you are saying. So I would say sometimes is to find ways to relate to people in different ways. I would go on life if people follow my life. I don't need to say, give me money for God to bless you. I just say, guys, I'm going to Dubai. I need money to eat. And whoever want to give me, they give me money. I would call Lovi and say, Lovi, I'm going to Africa. I need you to do a ticket and a hotel for me. And you will do it. Uh, I need a suit. It's too expensive for me. I want you to buy this suit for me. And you will do it because of the relationship, the love that is already established. Okay. So I would say it's more of culture and language. Okay. So it is the language that people won't understand because in their church, they believe in that language. It's what well, I think. It must be so because I, I don't ask for anything. And I will tell you that my relationship with you, and I have told you, and I have told you, yes. that my relationship with you has nothing to do with, with money. money for me. Bishop, what really touched me was I was a successful preacher. Then I saw you 2004 Mega Fest. I was shocked. 
because I believed myself to be a prophet and I was never going to preach because I felt like preachers are wasting people's time. Why are we going to church to hear what Moses did when we can read it in the Bible? That was me. My pastors grew up repeating same messages. If it's Easter, I know what's going to be preached and stuff. So I was never going to preach. 2004, I only watched you for 10 minutes. From that day, I said, I'm going to be a preacher. It changed my life. Megafest. Then, Megafest 2004. Then, I met you 2014, 10 years later. And from what I saw and felt from you was love. Genuine love for me. I've had preachers come to Zimbabwe, charge me hundreds of thousands of dollars. You charge nothing. You shocked me. We tried to give you money. You didn't even want money from us. And I started growing a relationship with you. You had no interest of taking anything from me. Shockingly, when I came to America, some other pastor started claiming me, he's my son, he's my son, he's my wife, because they have seen me making it in life. You changed a lot of my doctrine, you changed a lot of things I believed in, everything changed, but there was no money. If I'm to give you sometimes, I have to find ways to give you because I know bishops going to say, ah, I love you whether you're a man or what, and stuff like that. So I really appreciate you, Bishop. God bless. And I really thank you. But I, I, I strongly want to say to people, people are 100% different. And when God calls you, they call you differently. They are preachers. Growing up, our other pastor would say, remove that jacket, it's, it, God wants it. Mm. And he would take it. And it helped us because mm. we were stingy people and we were never going to give for God. Mm. So in his language, it wasn't biblical, but he helped us psychologically. Mm. Now, meeting Bishop and he has nothing he wants from me physically also blew my mind. Mm. So I believe sometimes there are people that will need a pastor like my old pastor <laughs> who will make sure. you remove your shoes. You go, home, <laughs> you go home without shoes, but uh, somewhere, somehow you are being helped. So I strongly believe it's just different languages. Yeah. different cultures. Exactly. So. If, if I can add this also, is that we also have a group of people who are church hurt. Yes, yes, please. And they were church hurt because when they followed God, they followed God in a carnal manner, not a spiritual manner. Yes, yes. They looked to man and they never looked to God. That's right. So they looked at church as a pyramid scheme. Oh. If you do this, you do this, God blesses you, this, you blow up. That was their concept. Mm. So when they went into church, because they were so canalized and they follow, you see, the deep call it unto the deep. Yeah. There are people who will say, Bishop deceived me. But anyone who knows Bishop knows that Bishop never deceived anybody. They heard what they wanted to hear yeah. and they misinterpreted it because of their own. You see, I, I always tell this to people when I'm talking about relationships and stuff, and I say that. You don't only fall in love with the person. Remember that person comes with all the betrayal, all the baggages, yeah. their childhood. And you. And when I was explaining this to you, Bishop, you, you summarized it, you, you packaged it, and you say adults are just children trying to get over their childhood trauma. I think you into, yeah. in, in that effect. Mm. So there are people who, they read the Bible, but because they don't have the understanding that it takes to, and they don't have the spirit of understanding, they say... Jesus said, freely you receive, so freely give. Yeah. Listen, the gospel is 100% free. What is the gospel? Yeah. Jesus died for you, give his li your life to him, and he will take you to heaven, which is the absolute truth. But the Lord Jesus himself traveled with donors who gave into his ministry, right. and he went around with a year's worth of wages, was with Jesus. Judas had money. How do we know this? The, the Bible tells us that Judas used to steal the offerings. Right. The Bible goes on to even tell us when... Jesus was in a certain place, and there were people who were hungry. Jesus, they came to Jesus and said, please send the people into the villages so that they're nearby villages so that they can find what to eat. And the That's Bible right. says, Jesus said, you give them what to eat. That's right. Why did Jesus say that? People don't understand is that they had the money to be able to do things, but the problem was there was nowhere to buy anything. That's right. So... There are people who took the verse, freely you received, freely give, to think 
that it means that anywhere where there is church, it is free. No, it is not in that way, in the sense that an example is, sometimes I hold schools. Like, right. I have teachers right now. I have a program called the RISE program, right. which is a ministerial <coughs> school where we have people from all over the world that come. We just finished our first group of people. Now we have the second pe group of people. Right. The teachers have to get paid. This has to be taken care of. That has to be taken That's care right. of. They will never complain about universities. But when it comes to you teaching people and equipping people, they will say, why are you charging Jesus? But that is yeah. their misunderstanding of scripture. Mm. So hurt people, when they see money because they remember uh, Bishop So or Pastor So, Apostle yeah. So, yeah. who say, send your $20 now and you get a breakthrough in 24 hours. They think that everybody else is doing the same That's thing. That's right. And that is just not true. That's not true. Now, secondly, this is the other side of it. And I feel like my dad, you know, touched on a lot of things and she touched on a lot of things too. But I want to touch on a spiritual aspect of sacrifice. Yes, go ahead. The Lord came to Abraham. Abraham didn't go to God. The Lord, the Lord came to him and said, right. go on to a land I will show you, I will make your father of nations, all that. But you see, at a time that now the promise is being waited on, God finally gives Abraham a son. That's right. And then the Lord tells Abraham, Abraham, give me your only son. What? Why are you asking me for what you promised me? Right. What's the, what's the point of this? Mm. You know all things. Why are you requesting of me what I love the most? And you said you give it to me for your own benefit. God told him, give it to me. And you don't hear God speaking to him or instructing him again. Abraham takes his own son, right. goes unto the altar, and when he's about to sacrifice him, an angel calls from heaven, the Bible says, and he says, now Abraham, do not harm the child. Right. Now I know that you love me. That's right. The language of love and worship to God is also in giving. And, the, and, and most of the people don't understand that, and they demonize those who encourage people to give, and many times... They encourage people to give from the bottom of their heart. Yeah. God is here telling him to give. And after he gives, his son is about to sacrifice him. God said, okay, okay, stop. There is a ram caught up in the in bush. The bush. Right. Now I know that you love me. So the evidence of love to God is in giving. For God so loved the world, he gave his only being. Right. God never said I love the world until he gave his son. Right. God never mentioned his love for the world. He, we know the grand plan of God, but for God to confess his love, God gave what he loves the most. That's right. So in, 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 in my understanding is this, in, uh, an example is this, Jesus heals a man and he tells him, go and give an offering according to the law of Moses. Show yourself to the priests. That's right. <laughs> And, and show yourself according to the law. Go show yourself to the priest and carry an offering according to the law of Moses. Mm. So why did, because God did not, man did not start the custom of giving. If you look at Cain and Abel, they are the first ones having a burnt offering before God or offering an offering before God without anybody ever instructing them. We don't see Adam and Eve giving anything in the garden, but you see their children all of a sudden sacrificing to God. And God comes to Ken and says, why are you cast down? If you give correctly, won't you be received? Be careful, something is coming into your heart and it's going to cause you, it will desire you, but you should have power over it. That's right. So m my understanding is this, and I'm sorry to say this and some people may misunderstand this, but I'm going to say because I have seen it for myself, where God challenged me to sacrifice in order for something, a, a, a new level, whether in life or in the spirit, for it to take place. God has done that. Now, does it mean that it is for everyone? I don't believe so. But I, I have, but I have seen it happen. A hundred million percent I have seen it happen. Whereby God challenged me to do something that I, that I depended on. And I sacrificed it before God and my whole life changed. Yeah. Now, now. Is it for everyone? I don't think so. When it comes to even deliverance, when it comes to breaking certain curses, just like an example, you know, I always say this, that some curses are because of people offending God. An example is, Good point. you know, if I dishonor Bishop as my grandfather, 
It doesn't matter how many times I go on my knees and say, God, forgive me. I did not sin against God. I sinned against Bishop. And because I sinned against Bishop, I need to go and humble myself before Bishop or else the wrath of God will still be on me. How dare you? Don't you know if you honor your father and your mother, it shall be well with you. There's a lot of people who are in church. They don't understand that if they don't go and repent to their parents who are still alive. Right, right. There will be a curse over them, not because a demon did it to them. It is God's <clears throat> repercussions because of dishonor. So my understanding of giving, I don't believe you can buy a miracle. I don't believe that either. It, it, it is nowhere in scripture. It is impossible. But, but, giving is a sign of faith. Oh, yes, and definitely. It, you know, it is a sign of faith and it's Definitely. also a sign of love. So there are certain things that we can never attract from God until God can trust us. I remember, is it okay if I share this? Papa? Go ahead. My father is a prophet and many don't understand that in, in our churches, ourselves, I'll even speak for myself. Bishop, if you saw the level of things, how many people we put through school, we pay rent for, we right, do this. Right. It's in, it will, it's my own accountant for my own personal funds was like, yo, you, this does not look good. The, the, the IRS will think you're laundering money or you're hiding, like, yo, you need to find a better way to do this because this is not looking good. But I can't stop when God commands me to do something. So there's a time when I was buying my first home when my father came to visit me, I was living in an apartment that was sad, if you saw. But yeah. it was my process. When my father came, he told me, this is the last time I will ever visit you in a place like this. I said, amen. You see, our culture has great honor for men of God. In this culture, people have no, especially in the Western world, we are bros, brothers, but there is no spiritual authority in understanding. God blessed me whereby I put some money together and I was now, okay, I have, I put in an offer. God showed me a place and then I was stuck. I didn't have money, Bishop. Yeah. I had zero money to cover the down payment I needed and I needed to show proof of, proof of funds right. within five days of what I needed for them to even consider me. Yeah. So, Bishop, I put all the money I could put together some people aided me. I never asked anyone. Some people knew. I called my dad because in my culture, even though my father has given me, right. it is wrong in my culture to ask of him because what I receive from him is the oil that permits me to function. That's right. So I cannot demand from him what is physical. It's temporary. Right. So I called Papa and said, Papa, it, I have four days. <laughs> Four, four days to prove that I have this and today is on Thursday I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday Monday I have to show this right. Papa prayed for me and he said the Lord said take 10,000 and give it and on Monday he will give you everything that you want if you believe I am a prophet I'm telling you because God told me Bishop I doubted my father before the Lord, I've, Papa, have I not told you this? I doubted him. I said, no. How can God know I need about a hundred and I need about a hundred thousand to make up this? God told me to find this house. And then I go and ask my father to pray. He prays for me and he tells me this is the instruction God is giving you. Subject. Subs I thought he was the devil. I said, no. <laughs> what maybe they've been saying about my father, <laughs> and this is years ago, is true. Then I prayed, then I remembered how this man has loved me with nothing, how I have seen God touch people through him. I actually chastised myself. You know what I did, Bishop? I told myself, if I will ever doubt God again through my father, to, re to, to punish myself, I added five more and I sent it. And I said, God, today I will know if you are really the one who told me to do this. Right. Bishop, Saturday comes. I rested. On Saturday came. Friday came, nothing happened. Saturday came, somebody called me randomly. 
I don't even know who this person is. He said, prophet, I had a dream. You ministered to me. I had a dream, and God told me I should send you 150,000. I, mm. needed, I needed 100,000. This guy's telling me 150,000. Mm. I hung up the phone because I thought, first of all, I don't give out my number. Yeah. Number two, I never show people that I'm in need. So I called Papa. I said, Papa, I don't know if this is a demonic game. <laughs> what is happening? He told me, what did he say? He said, I need to send my car. He said, God is trying to help you and you're not listening. Ah, I doubted. The guy kept calling, calling. Finally, I just responded to the man. He said, you minister to me, my wife, my son, and everything you said came to pass. And I had a dream. God told me you need this. So I gave him the account number. Monday morning, I'm supposed to have a meeting. I'm supposed to send everything by 11. This man went to the bank bishop at 9 a.m. By 10, I had not only the funds to cover my down payment, I have what I needed to fill the house that I was going into. Mm. I, called, I called my father after I saw that. I knelt, I said, ah, Papa, I doubted you. I repent. You are a prophet from God. I, I, we are not even... <laughs> I cried. So. I cried. But in short, what I'm trying to say is this. I believe it was a lesson for me, yeah. personally. Maybe it's not for everyone else that is watching. I believe it was a lesson for me. Because when it comes, you see, the highest level of faith or the most, let me not say highest, the most demanding kind of faith is required of a prophet. Especially if you are truly seeing and hearing from God. You see, John the Baptist had the voice that said, this is the, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I believe this was a witness to him, not to Jesus, because Jesus was the son. And if you read the way it's written, God is saying it to this is my, he's pointing to Christ. Yes, yes, yes. But the same John, when he went through the difficult time, he sent Challenge. his disciples to ask, are you the one or should we should wait for another? For another. Right. Because when God speaks to you, it is not as material as people think. Mm. I have had instances where I've prophesied to people. Mm. But it took me faith for me to say what I said. There was a man who was, on, was, was uh, in for murder, Bishop in for murder. He was among a group of people that somebody died because he was among them. And he, he didn't play a part in the killing the man. He did not. But he was associated with it because he was present when all this, there was videos and everything. Because of being in such close proximity, he was also in and they tried to plead, they tried to whatever, they kept it mean for years. His daughter, his wife, and his two daughters came to church. I don't know them. I finished ministering. But the young daughter was holding a, an envelope, and she pulled my spirit, Bishop, pulled my spirit. God didn't speak. She pulled my spirit. I just was attracted to this young girl. And I went to the mother, and I took the envelope, and I said to the mother, I am seeing Peter in prison. This means there is a man in prison. Is this your husband? She said, yes, it is my husband. I said, this and this is what happened. But the Lord said, if he would commit to serving God and following God and come and testify what God has said, what God, what God will do for him, yeah. then God will release what miracle he's waiting for. Mm -hmm. Bishop, this man had... Christo, Christo, Christopher Dorton, I think he was uh, O.J. Simpson's lawyer. And the, and the lawyer told him, you need to take the plea deal. Just do your 15 years and then it will be fine. If you go to trial, you'll be locked up. For, you'll get maybe 30, 40 years. Just take the plea deal. So when his wife went to him and showed him the video in visiting, the man was in prison and said, should I believe my lawyer or should I believe a man I have never heard from? Yeah. He said, I will believe God. The man believed God, and I told the wife before she left, I said, if he will commit to following God by Wednesday, his trial was starting Monday, by Wednesday, this whole case will be thrown out. That's what the Lord told me. Now, you have to understand what kind of faith you have to have to trust God to speak to that. Speak that. Yeah. Bishop, by Wednesday, the jury, all the evidence this matter, they released this man. 
The man is serving God winning souls. So what I'm saying is that there are things that are required of you based on your calling. There are certain curses that can only be broken by our giving. There are certain curses that need to be broken by repenting. Everything is different when it comes to God. The problem is that certain people have tried to address what was not given to them to minister. How can somebody hold a prophetic school yet they are not a prophet? How can they teach on the yeah. prophetic? Yeah. How can somebody teach of the apostolic yet That's they have never? So it is many times the confusion in all this is not only the lack of the, not only the, the church hurt part, but it's also the jurisdiction part. People out of their lanes. People out of their lanes. Yeah. Why, why, would you, why, would you, um, why would you go into what you think God said? Like I'll, I'll say this, and I'm sorry mm. for saying this. This happened this past week. Mm. One of my spiritual sons that is very eager to preach, mm. very eager to preach, and I've been telling him, be patient, be patient, be patient. A man of God, a very well-known apostle, I won't mention his name. Mm. Thank God there are many apostles. Mm. <laughs> reached out to him because this guy is involved in business and he's preaching and stuff. Reached out to him. Paid his flight ticket. Took him to the city that he lives in. Mm. Made him attend church to sit with him and tell him, the prophet you're following and those African prophets, which is such a dirty term. Imagine if we stood and said the Western pastors. He said, these African prophets, because I don't know why they associate witchcraft with the Africans. Yet I have seen more people operating in, and maybe it's because of spiritual eyes that God has permitted us to see. More witchcraft than I've seen even where, more than where I grew up. Especially the worst kind of witchcraft is the one that is hidden. At least we know some people... They yeah. practice that, you know. So, this man sat down to tell him, uh, this one is fake, his spiritual father is fake, they are, what they have is tainted and this and this. And to make him confess so that he can be delivered, the man said, what are you talking about? You are talking about these people and you don't. He said, well, the Lord told me, bribe money for the person to create false evidence against me. But all this is jealousy and the lack of understanding of and, what God has given, given certain people. And this happens all the time. Thank God. And I thank God because the reality is always this. God is always vindicated and the proof is always in the pudding. Yeah. The evidence is always there. So the biggest issue is always people trying to get into lanes that are not theirs. That's right. If Jesus is preached... If Jesus is confessed, if Jesus is demonstrated, if it is not your lane, you don't understand, go and inquire. Don't try and... And uh, also at the same time, we are not perfect is the other problem. Yes. If we were perfect, then our subject would be easy. We, uh, as I preach in my first church branch, I was 16. I was still under my brother, Apostle Java. And my main kingdom members, I started when I was 19. And from 19, now I'm 35. Of course, there is a big room for mistakes. Yes, of course. So many people now use the evidence of Character our downfall when we were weak, when we were wounded, when yeah. we, to then point people to say, a man of God will never sound like this, will never act like this, will never dress like this, will never be this. Mm -hmm. So... The church is in a place where if we all come to understand that none of us is perfect, and instead of pointing each other's fingers, we should help each other, the church can be better. Mm -hmm. Instead of that po apostle to call you or reach you on Instagram to say, I think you are wrong, A, B, C, D, correct yourself in this, since you already have a platform, many people can be touched if you do this. The pastor is trying to destroy the whole God's work because he has a problem with one preacher. And many times it's personal. It's very personal. And at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. None mm -hmm. of us is perfect. But the real issue as it relates to money, as it relates to your presentation, as it relates to your lifestyle, is not based on perfection. It's based on being genuine. And if you're genuine, 
Because I will tell anybody in the world, I'm not perfect, but I seek to be genuine. And if you're genuine before God in your receiving money, in your giving money, if you're genuine before God in your lifestyle, if you're genuine before God in the way you think, the way you walk, the way you uh, search and seek out his word, then the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. Where deception comes is when people don't have a love for truth. Sure. And that's how that works. I think our time is up right now, and uh, we're going to have to do this in multiple uh, different presentations, but there's one other presentation that we need. We need the Queen of Wakanda to come. The Queen. And then, uh, thank you. Thank you. Wasn't Thank she a blessing so to us? A very amazing. And, and that I'm connection to the young I'm, people. I'm sorry if I was long-winded. It was. No, no, it's it fine. No. It's I just don't know what talking. people should be expecting the 13th Saturday morning. Yes, if, um, the lady's going to be joining. We're going to talk about the five love languages. And the five love languages, the words of affirmation, act of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. So we're gonna break it down. Cherie, one of my besties, she's gonna talk about her love language, which is food. Another young lady is gonna talk about the act of service, which is ministry. Another young lady is gonna talk about quality time and physical touch. And then we're gonna ask the women how to figure out their love language. That's the biggest question. What is my love language? How do I express love to my family members, to my coworkers, to people in the church? It's just a missing quality that some women say they possess. Oh, fantastic. So all of this is happening May 12th through May 14th. We're going to have every kind of ministry that God has given to the church. Join us, please. Come and be a part of this great service. And not only for those who are unsaved, those who are saved, not only for us, us in a plethora environment, but for us in a specific women's ministry environment. It's going to be wonderful. Join us. So the Saturday is going to be ladies only? No, actually we're going to have some guys to join us because they're asking me, to help their women find out what their love language is, and some of the men gonna come because they're looking for wives. Oh, is that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 because my question was gonna be, if the men are not allowed to be there, how are we gonna bring a balance on expression from both worlds? I agree. I think the men can be there, can be here with us, but the women are gonna be doing the speaking. So it's not going to be a dialogue, it's just discourse? We may have some interaction in the end. Okay. Because we do want you guys' opinion. Okay. We may. <laughs> we may. Oh, Lord. It's going to be one deep. The, deep. One of the biggest problems uh, some of the women were discussing is the physical touch. How to make that physical touch one of your love languages. But I thought touching was what everybody wanted to do anyway. Well, <laughs> some people don't like to be touched. What? Jesus. No, seriously. Finding out some people don't in, like In a marital people. relationship? In, a, in whatever relationship. Yeah, some I've, people I've say you're in my comfort zone. many people that's that right. are like that. It's been Don't want to be touched. No. You don't want to be touched. But the, the more, most Trauma. scary part, I don't know how they're going to help other ladies. I was praying and counseling a couple, and the men say to me, for the past 17 years, I have not seen the body of my wife. I said, what, what are you? What? The body, the body okay. of my wife. I'm like, what are you? I'm, I'm confused. He says, every time she has to switch off the light, to remove clothes or to change, or I have to leave the room <laughs> to change. And I thought it was crazy. So I asked the lady, and the lady is saying, yes, I don't. So I don't know how they can help uh, people like that you know, if they can be she's helped. traumatized. If she doesn't want to show her body to her husband, that could be many reasons. He probably uh, body shamed her. He could have said she's fat. Well, why does it have to be his fault? 
Well, <laughs> why does it have to be hers? Well, that's the whole point. I think that's why you deal with it in such an open manner that nobody feels particularly condemned to get to the root of this is issue. Yeah. But ultimately, somebody's got to, have to take some sort of responsibility for behavior that is not very common. Bishop, I, I was evil one day to my wife, and God forgive me, and she forgave me. I said, I wanted to hug you in the afternoon, but <laughs> you have gone big. <laughs> That's a no-no. But you tell a woman two months it. down the line, she was a stick or chin. <laughs> I pushed her to work harder in the gym because she was missing gym. She just gave birth and stuff. Oh, I see. So my joke pushed her to be the best that she wanted to be. Oh, I got you. And then after my apologies, I end up saying, you owe me because if it wasn't me being evil to you. <laughs> you see my I point? That's why the young lady won't take her clothes off because somebody could have said, you look a certain way. But it but it would true. seem but but, but she here but she, but, she but here's jumping the gym now. But here's a positive part. The positive part was the reaction to it, even though it was painful, she did something about it. But now for seventeen years, nothing has been done about it. Mm. Now that means that in spite of what it is that motivates, if there is something to motivate it'll come to pass. Those issues are deeper, deeper than physical. She's been traumatized. So then, uh, so you're going to, to initiate this, but obviously, as uh, the prophet Lovi would say, we can cast the devil out, but a soul takes time to heal. Mm -hmm. So after the conversations with the women, if there's something that you see that's glaring, but it's a long-term fix, do you have a solution for that? Yes, we're going to have a prophetess here to pray for them. That's and what do you name. have after that? Um, because definitely. because if the if it's more than if it's a soul that's Counseling, bruised, yeah. Counseling, then, therapy. then because okay. all we're going to talk about is love, patience, tolerance, kindness, respect, and honor. And so when we start talking about these qualities that most women want to possess, and when they find out they don't have it and we can show them how to receive these um, qualities. And then if, this, if we go to a point where they say, well, it's beyond that, that's when we're gonna hand them over to you. That's, uh, that's Yes, but what I think we need to do is have some, have, have some clinical contact. I have, can have somebody some therapists here. In, yeah, I can have, have some a therapist, psychologist here. Have, have some somebody who here. they can talk to long term. It yes. could be maybe three or six months online mm -hmm. courses. Yeah, or yeah, well, but 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 if we're going to get them going like places. that, if we're going to stir it up, we're going to have to follow it up. Oh yeah, I I agree. I agree. All right, good. All right, we're happy. All right, any more announcements you so want to make? I would want to what say about to for the, the preachers, people, the prophetic? Yeah, I wanted to say to the people, uh, if they visit my website, prophetpassion dot com, they can sign up for. We are doing both exegetical and prophetic class. That's right. Where we want to to build people who are preachers into how to preach and how to prepare your messages, especially into the now, because back then we used to preach Sundays and Thursdays, but these days we as preachers we have to be online. We have to be live almost twice a day, three times a day. How best can we? put together a presentation that can cover people for a month. And uh, if you're prophetic, how best can you develop yourself knowing that you're called to be a prophet, you're called into ministry, how can you build yourself to, to be that? So we have a prophetic class that many people, if they want, they can go and sign up online at prophetpassion.com. And uh, let people know that on the 12th, 13th and 14th is going to be extra super duper. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I'm going to add one more question. The women want to know how do they get more quality time out of their men? Men in general or their men husband, who minister? Their mate, whoever they're dealing with. Everybody is not How do they get more quality? How do they get more quality time out of him? That would be amazing. I think they should come and hear it. I, I Everybody should come in here. I'm suggesting that the ladies may start. If we have time, we can join at the closing. 
the closing? Yeah. yeah. At the closing, maybe and we should come in. Mm. And maybe our question is, how can we get more cooking out of our wives? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it's going to be wonderful. We're going to go uh, do multiple things, and then in the evenings we're going to have just a powerful service. But on Saturday, it's going to be a day that's power packed with multiple, multiple mm. different approaches of ministry to meet the needs of all of you. Sign up, please. Where do they sign up? Prophetpassion.com. 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 <laughs> God bless you. Heaven smile on Amen. you. God bless you. God bless you.